now towards the end i would also like to uh, extend the same concept of looking at the response mode by mode uh, to a non linear structure we know that the idea of mode shapes uh, is strictly applicable only to linear systems it is not applicable to non linear systems so the mode shapes concept is only applicable to linear systems mode shapes do not exist uh, in non linear structures and obviously when if they don't exist they cannot be uncoupled they cannot be separated uh, just like we can do it in linear analysis response spectrum analysis or linear time history analysis uh, or mode superposition methods they are all applicable to linear computer models Uh, but there are different studies or different methods which can approximately uncouple the individual modal responses even for non linear structures uh, when they uh, use non linear structures and their corresponding mode shapes actually the mode shapes of corresponding linear structures are used to approximate uh, the idea so uh, one of the methods which is based on this concept is the uncoupled modal response history analysis procedure it was originally developed by chopra uh, at uc berkeley but was used to actually uh, further develop or form the basis of his well known modal pushover analysis mpa procedure uh, but the idea itself although is very approximate but can still be sometimes uh, used to uh get the individual modal fluctuating responses for non linear systems while saying that it is highly approximate and shouldn't be used without proper validation and verification uh, so let me just quickly show you the demonstration of this uh, uncoupled modal response history analysis on a few example structures and how uh, it can be used to um you, to get the individual modal responses even in the non linear range of response so the basic idea is that um, uh, the classical modal analysis procedure simply says that you have a real multiple degree of freedom system uh, which is an n degree of freedom structure you decompose it into n single degree of freedom system and uh, applying the earthquake to this structure or applying the earthquake to individual single degree of freedom systems and combining their responses is roughly approximate uh, if you can uh, only account for first few vibration modes uh, but the umrha or uncoupled modal response history analysis extends that idea to an inelastic structural model it says that um, we can still somehow use the idea of mode shapes of corresponding linear structure Uh, to uncouple them uh, uncouple the individual modal responses but this time instead of uh, representing each mode by a linear single degree of freedom system we have a non linear single degree of freedom system with different properties representing each individual vibration mode of the structure of the non linear structure so if we apply uh, the actual earthquake to a detailed non linear computer model and perform the non linear time history analysis or response history analysis uh, we will get roughly the same responses if we uh, model the individual non linear single degree of freedom systems representing each mode of the actual structure and apply the earthquakes to each of them and then sum their responses similar to what we do in classical modal analysis but it is valid uh, for the linear systems and for classical analysis but it is very approximate for non linear range of response but the idea is shown to work well uh, if we can um, uh, approximate the non linear single degree of freedom systems with a reasonable accuracy if we can develop these mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 and so on these single degree of freedom systems such that they really represent the non linear response in that particular vibration mode then the combination will be very close to what we get from non linear time history analysis and this is what is shown here in next slides that how we obtain a sing non linear single degree of freedom system for a particular mode that we first perform the modal pushover analysis using the modal inertia load pattern for a particular mode so we apply cyclic loading for a particular mode shape 
proportional to a particular mode shape like first mode or like second mode or like third mode and we get the cyclic force deformation behavior we approximate it with a hysteretic model and assign it to a single degree of freedom system and now that single degree of freedom system represents the contribution of that particular vibration mode even in the nonlinear range we subject that single degree of freedom system to the earthquake and we convert though its individual responses to again to the multiple degree of freedom system and uh, this will give us the individual responses for that particular ith mode we repeat that process for second mode for third mode and then we sum the individual modal responses we get the same response almost same response as the nonlinear time history analysis but obviously again i say that this procedure would be would be very similar or become equal to the classical modal response history analysis for linear systems but for nonlinear systems this procedure will be highly approximate analysis procedure because it is based on two basic assumptions first is that uh, the, the first is that the mode shapes exist in the nonlinear range and if they exist their responses can simply be uh, individually calculated and superimposed which is actually not applicable for any elastic system and second is that the mode shapes can be uncoupled and if the nth modes uh, in elastic nth modes effective earthquake forces are applied this structure will mainly respond in only in the nth mode shape and the contribution from other modes will be negligible so based on these assumptions this procedure is developed but again it is an approximate method and should always be validated with nonlinear time history analysis before its use so uh, we have applied this method to three case study buildings uh, they are located in bangkok and they have varying heights like 20 33 and 44 story and they have all the uh, properties of a real typical uh, case study structures their nonlinear modeling was performed for shear walls and for columns fiber modeling was used and for infill masonry walls the equivalent diagonal strut model was used the nonlinear fibers for concrete and steel were modeled using the uh, adequate uh, constitutive relationships in this particular example uh, study we used four different sets of ground motions first set is um, a, a long period type spectrum which has a very a large range of peak starting from very low period up till very high period the second one is a typical short period spectrum which has a peak at a very short period range but very negligible values as we move forward third one is a very long period spectrum from distant subduction earthquakes fourth one is actually the code spectrum from ASCE spectrum uh, so if we just compare set 1 and set 2 we can see that uh, let's say for these structures mostly the first mode is somewhere in this range so we can see that the spectral acceleration for both first and second mode because this will be a range for T1 and this will be range for T2 for these structures so both of these spectral accelerations are significant are comparable but for uh, set 2 you will see that the first mode range will give us a very low spectral acceleration but second mode is somewhere towards the peak so this observation you can have here and directly see the uh, the structural damage for example in this example you it is shown the shear wall cracking with different colors red color means that the wall is already cracked so this is from ground motion set 1 which look like this uh, like this so this was t1 this was t2 of our structure both modes have very uh, high comparable spectral accelerations and therefore we have damage uh, at around mid height as well as around base because the first mode of this structure would be like this having the maximum uh, damage at base but the second mode will be like this having the maximum ordinate around at mid height and therefore the maximum cracking there also but this set 2 was like the spectrum look like this which has only the peak spectral acceleration at the second mode but not at the first mode so therefore you can see that there, although there is some damage at the bottom but 
mainly the cracking occur at around mid height where the maximum contribution of second mode uh, was there and which actually caused this cracking at mid height right so even by looking at the time periods and their locations on the spectrum and the shape of spectrum you can interpret the results of your nonlinear time history analysis and your uh, other dynamic analysis procedures so coming back to the umrha procedure we actually performed the uh, cyclic pushover analysis for each modes modal inertial uh, load patterns for all three buildings so this is one example where 44 story building was subjected to the first modes uh, inertia load pattern and this is the cyclic behavior observed by uh, that exhibited by that particular structure similarly we did it for all three buildings and for first three modes of each building and then we use their cyclic behaviors to model the single degree of freedom systems uh, we map these behaviors to, to those single degree of freedom systems so that they can represent their first three modes so this is an example showing that how we mapped this particular behavior to a single degree of freedom system and now when we compare the response of that particular single degree of freedom system against an earthquake and compare the cyclic pushover uh, we get a very good matching so the black line is the actual cyclic pushover of the multiple degree of freedom system while the red line is the response of uh, the particular vibration mode which is mode 1 in this case of the same building right so we did it from uh, for each structure and for each mode so this is mode 1 for 3 buildings then mode 2 for 3 buildings and then mode 3 for 3 buildings beside several other important um, aspects which we can obtain or results which we, we can obtain from all that exercise um, one uh, one information which you can get is the level of nonlinearity experienced by each mode for example here you can see this is the uh, mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 of a uh, 20 story building you can see here that the first mode experienced the most nonlinearity the single degree of freedom system corresponding to first mode went into the nonlinear range but the single degree of freedom system corresponding to second mode didn't go much into nonlinear range and the third mode even remain elastic similarly for uh, 33 story building both first mode and second mode experienced nonlinearity but second mode experienced significantly less nonlinearity compared to first mode while the third mode remain elastic same is the result for the, the 44 story building so we can conclude and we can observe that um, as we increase the number of modes the, they tend to remain elastic and uh, the nonlinearity is mostly concentrated in first mode and for high rise buildings may be in the second mode also so that's how we can uh, since we get the individual modal responses from those single degree of freedom systems so we can uh, apply the earthquake to those single degree of freedom systems and now they give us the individual modal responses for the actual multiple degree of freedom system so that's how we can plot these responses now you can see the envelope of the combined history so black line is the actual nonlinear time history uh, sorry the black line is the combined result from first three modes while the uh, green blue and red are the mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 contributions so just like we can get the individual modal contributions in the elastic response spectrum analysis we can approximately get uh, the responses uh, in the nonlinear range also for each mode this is for displacement and this is for interstory drift ratio similarly you can also have the decomposition of dynamic response for story shear and story moment or any other response so again you can see the black red line is the combined response from first three modes in the the combined nonlinear response while the uh, the green blue and red lines are the mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 contributions uh, for the same uh, structural response uh, in the nonlinear range similarly on the right hand side you can see the decomposition of uh, story moments into three modes now when we compare this solid black line which is the combined from first three modes with the nonlinear time history analysis we get a very good match here you can see that the black line is the nonlinear time history analysis and the blue line is the combination of the responses from first three single degree of freedom system or first three modes 
and you can get uh, you can see here that it is a very good match but obviously uh, the umrha is an approximate method it heavily depends on how well you can model the nonlinear single degree of freedom systems and also how many modes you have included and the level of nonlinearity and all that so it must always be used um, after validation with nonlinear time history analysis we have done it for all three buildings and you can see here that the blue line is matching well with the the solid black line the time history analysis and umrha are matching well so once they match well we can say with more confidence that the individual modal responses are also representing the two true modal responses in the nonlinear range so we can see here that for example this particular example at the base the second mode is uh, highest base having the highest base shear while the first and third have the lower base shear so if we want to control base shear we shouldn't focus on first mode we should focus on the second mode if we suppress second mode since it has the highest contribution in base shear it will significantly reduce the overall base shear or combined base shear so all of this information we can have once we have the individual modal contributions like this in this figure you can even see the time history responses as decomposed into first mode second mode and third mode and the combined response is matching well with the nonlinear time history combined response so the black line here is the nonlinear time history analysis the blue line is the combined response uh, the stitched response from the first three vibration modes as decomposed by the umrha procedure so this is the roof displacement under this ground acceleration so the first figure comes from the first modes uh, single degree of freedom system the second comes from the second mode single degree of freedom system the third comes from third mode single degree of freedom system and you can also see that the time periods are reducing with as we go from first to second to third mode but when we combine them we get a line which is very close to the nonlinear time history analysis uh, for the roof displacement so this also shows or validates that the idea of umrha can still be applied even if it if it is very approximate but still can be effectively utilized to decompose the uh, the individual vibration modes responses even in the nonlinear range so in order to conclude i would say that uh, this um, approximate procedures like umrha uh, they uh, although should be used with great care but they are a great tool to uh, understand the composition of dynamic response uh, and the complex nonlinear seismic responses can also be understood uh, well with these uh, kind of simplified procedures although the nonlinear time history analysis is the most accurate method but uh, it cannot uh, provide us the composition of individual modes and therefore um, uh, you may have a limited understanding or insight into the into the dynamic response so obviously these simplified procedures do not take much computational effort compared to the time history analysis but nowadays with very fast uh, computer solvers this may not be a big issue for um, the nonlinear time, time history analysis so um, uh, again i would end on this point that um, uh, i gave you an example of uh, devising a control measure for uh, suppressing a particular vibration response or dynamic response of a structure these kind of procedures which can clearly show you uh, the composition of dynamic response uh, how the response is made of which mode is contributing how much and at what story height it is contributing how much individual modal response profiles all this information can be used to develop effective design strategies effective control strategies uh, to to get a more effective or resilient uh, high rise building structures so i would end on this particular note and if you have any questions i would uh, be happy to answer them